Uh, Joseph showed up for practice and he, he complained about being a little bit tired, but that's not abnormal. He, uh, they did a warm up lap around the fields and then the coach had him run some short wind sprints. And I had stepped away from the field, but I was on site. And Joseph, they had the, the boys running from say home plate out behind second base and returning. And on the return, um, Joseph collapsed and... And um, my husband actually went to practice with him and um, I had received a phone call later that evening that something had happened to Joseph and that he was on his way to the hospital. Um, when I met up with him at the intermediate hospital here in Georgetown so they could get him stabilized is when I met up with the paramedics and the paramedics had explained to me exactly what was going on and basically they told me to expect the worst. They said that uh, more than likely he wouldn't survive. And at first they thought that he had just like hurt his knee. Um, they came and got me and I arrived there and the, the coaches were there and uh, I immediately knew something was wrong. Joseph's uh, eyes were rolled back and he was laying face down and he was motionless. Um, we turned him over and uh, you know you expect everything to be okay and I'll, and I'm looking at him and he's not breathing and you start trying to figure out what's going on so we immediately call 911. Uh, luckily with the coaches knew CPR one of the co or two of the coaches started CPR on him immediately. Uh, the ambulance arrives and again you believe you know the ambulance is here everything's going to be okay um, he's yet to regain consciousness he's not breathing or anything um, they start working on him uh, they get out the defibrillator they shock him it's like you, you know everything will be fine they shock him he doesn't get up he, his heart doesn't restart um, they shock him a second time and the, you can tell the workers are starting to get a lot more frantic about what's happening uh, and his heart doesn't necessarily start again right, and they're they're giving him uh, injections directly into the into the chest, and they finally get him stable enough um, to actually start to move him. And what they did is they they load him in the ambulance, and in going into the ambulance, he still has a fireman on top of him doing CPR with compression and uh, somebody with him with an airbag to keep him breathing and he was not even stable enough to transport him directly to um, Dell's Children's Hospital where we had to go to an intermediate hospital where they worked on him for an hour uh, and then had him stable uh, enough to just to move him down to Dell's. Uh, he was immediately put in an uh, intensive care unit and uh, the doctors there were wonderful. They started working on him immediately. They put him into a, uh, I guess a chemically induced coma if you would to prevent the, uh, the swelling, because I guess they were worried about the, the brain swelling and other things since his heart had stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, they still weren't sure what had happened, but they were just trying to stabilize him. Um, but uh, I guess in the midst of everything, by the time they were done, he w his body was chilled to like 92 degrees. He had about 12 or 13 IVs in him uh, with different mm -hmm. fluids that he needed. And um, he was kept in that, I guess, state on for three days. Uh, just a uh, totally different, like from always being about baseball, now it's no baseball at all, and I play golf now, but I really enjoy playing golf, so it's not that bad, but it's totally different. So we had no idea. You start hearing the statistics, you know, one in 500 kids have it, and mm -hmm survival rate I've heard is less than 10% on an event so we consider ourselves very lucky that we still have Joseph here um, but going back to the story just they found that Joseph had it and they tested back through uh, the family because they say a lot of times it's hereditary and ironically uh, they found that I have it and uh, so in testing the family I have it luckily my younger son does and my wife doesn't um, but uh, so Joseph helped me insofar as, you know, I have to watch myself uh, and I've actually had to get a defibrillator implanted just in case myself. Uh, just to uh, let them know that they need to get checked so they don't have to go through what I had to because get checked so you know if you have it or not and don't have to go through the hard times. <laughs>